This channel recently reached the 5,000 subscriber mark, and I didn't want to let the moment pass without thanking those of you who've made that possible. Hi, I'm Curtis, and in this short video, I want to tell you a little bit about my background, explain to you why I make these videos, share with you some ideas I have for future videos, and also to solicit your input to help make this channel even better. Now you may notice that I produced my first video way back in 2017, back in the days when I was using analog cameras to do electronically assisted astronomy. And I shot that video on an old camcorder and had to digitize it to upload it to YouTube. Now it took four more years before I had enough time to get back to making these videos. And since then I've produced a total of 37 additional videos on my channel. So again, thank you to those of you who've supported me by subscribing and watching these videos over the past few years. I do get questions from time to time about my background. I'm an experimental physicist, having worked for 40 years in the tech industry. I think that'll explain a little bit about my approach to these videos. In fact, I like to make sure that I understand all the details before I produce a video. And in many cases, I might spend a few weeks researching areas of the topic that I'm not comfortable enough with to explain to you in a video. So I like to do my homework to make sure that what I show you and what I tell you in these videos is going to help you and not send you off in the wrong direction. Now you'll obviously notice these two scopes on either side of me. This is a 60 millimeter Unitron refractor that I bought with money saved for my paper route when I was about 13 or 14 years old. And this is obviously a Seastar S50. Quite a difference in technology over the years. Actually, this Unitron probably cost in today's equivalent dollars five times what the Seastar costs now. And you can imagine the difference and what these two can do. I got interested in astronomy during the space race back in the 60s when I was growing up as a young kid. And that translated into my desire to look deep into the cosmos. And that's why I bought this Unitron refractor. Now, this is an F-15 refractor, so it's not really ideal for deep sky objects. But that was okay, because growing up in the city of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, right in the heart of the city, my skies weren't very dark, so you couldn't really see too many stars. But I could look at things like the sun, the moon, and a couple of the really bright planets. Now, like many of us who got interested in astronomy in our youth, I set the hobby aside for many decades and finally came back to it in 2008 when I bought my first Schmidt Cassegrain telescope, a nine and a quarter inch model from Celestron. And I was disappointed with what I could see visually in terms of deep sky objects. So it didn't take me long to get into electronically assisted astronomy. And back in those days, we used analog video cameras to enhance the view compared to what you could see visually through an eyepiece. And in March of 2016, I published a review article on using electronically assisted astronomy in Sky and Telescope magazine. Now, over the years, I've graduated from analog cameras to these low read noise digital cameras. While I still like to do electronically assisted astronomy, over the last few years, I've been trying my hand at more traditional astrophotography on a number of different telescopes, including an 11-inch SCT, where I like to use the Hyperstar with my ASI 2600 camera. So that gives you some insight into my background. Now, the next question is, why do I do these videos? I certainly don't do this as a money-making operation. It's not a business for me. It's actually a hobby within my astronomy hobby. And I do it because I like to share my knowledge and help people overcome the hurdles and obstacles they find when they are either first trying to get into amateur astronomy or they're trying to use a new piece of equipment or they're trying a new technique. Now, another part of my background that is relevant is the fact that I've done a lot of teaching over the years. Started in high school tutoring lower classmen in algebra. I was a teaching assistant teaching undergraduates physics when I was at the university and even throughout my professional career I taught formal courses in the application of statistics in the design and analysis of scientific experiments to other engineers and scientists I work with. Now that experience has obviously helped me 
to be able to break down these topics into simple step-by-step -step explanations. And, and I think that's why many of you have subscribed to this channel. Now, it does take me a long time to put these videos together. I don't think I've ever put together a video in a single day. Sometimes I will shoot the video segments, take a look at those and decide that the explanation I gave or the detail I gave just wasn't right to come across the way I want it to come across. And it's literally taken me weeks to put together some of these videos. But that's the way I prefer to do it. And I hope that it comes across to you that I've taken the care and the time to put these together so that it helps you in the best way that I can help you. So one of the main reasons for shooting this particular video is to solicit your help in making this channel even better. Now, let me give you a couple of suggestions on the ways that you can do that. First, if you haven't already subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Second, it really helps if you like the video. That helps the Google algorithm to put this higher in the search list when someone searches the topic that I make the video about. It will also help a lot if you help me get the word out. And you can do that in many different ways. Tell your friends about the channel. If you belong to an astronomy club, let the people in your club know about this channel. And if you post online on a particular topic where I've made a video that was helpful on that topic, please put a link to that video so others who know nothing about this channel will be able to find it. Now, another way you can help me is by putting comments down below this video and let me know what topics you would like me to consider doing videos on. I can't guarantee that I can cover any and all the topics that people post, but it'll be very helpful to hear what people would like to see videos on. I mean, I try to pick topics that I think are relevant, ones that pop up as issues to me, or I see folks talk about online where they're grappling with an issue. But if you put a comment down below and say, here's a topic that you might wanna consider, I'll be glad to take a look at it and consider it for future videos. And the last way you can help me with this channel is by using my affiliate links down below the videos. I'm not trying to make a lot of money on this channel and I don't, but I do buy a lot of equipment to assist me in making these videos. And sometimes I end up buying things that I don't actually need for myself. I buy them because I think they're relevant to the topic I wanna make a video on. And so I'd like to be hands-on with the hardware adapters and other pieces of equipment that I discuss in these videos. As an example, if you've watched my recent Seastar EQ mode videos, you'll see that I'm using this Skywatcher wedge to mount the Seastar. But if you look here, you'll see the Seastar is mounted on a Williams Optics wedge, which is uh, about three times as expensive as the Skywatcher. Now, obviously I don't need two wedges, but I have this idea to test out the more expensive Williams Optics wedge compared to the relatively inexpensive Skywatcher wedge and find out whether it's actually worth the money for us to buy the more expensive wedge and whether we'll get better results with our C-Star on that versus this wedge. So obviously one of these wedges I'm not gonna need going forward, but I have it anyway. And you should also note that you can use the affiliate links at any time. I have links to Amazon. You don't have to buy astronomy equipment. You can buy anything on there. I also have links to High Point Scientific and Agena Astro. I buy my own astronomy equipment from both of those and I've been very happy with their sales and service over the years. So I can recommend them as well. So going forward, what ideas do I have for topics? I don't think we fully exhausted the topics that are relevant with the C-Star. And as ZWO comes out with upgrades to the C-Star app, I'll wanna do other step-by-step -step video tutorials on those features, depending on how complex and involved they are. Also, I'm looking forward to C-Star coming out with a larger aperture model. I will definitely wanna purchase that when it comes out and do a whole series of videos like I've done on the S50 as well. I mentioned before that I've been spending a little bit of time over the last couple of years doing astrophotography. I'm not yet at the point where I'm comfortable enough to make a video on those topics, but I suspect that will happen sometime in the future. Also, I'm very interested in the topic of noise in astrophotography and EAA. There are many different sources of noise that affect the quality of our images. And there are different techniques for attacking each of those types of noise. 
So in the future, you'll probably see some videos where I go through the different noise sources and what you can do to improve your images by mitigating several of those sources of noise. So let me know with your comments down below how you feel about those topics I mentioned. And let me know any other topics that you think would be appealing to a broad cross-section of our fellow amateur astronomers. Okay, I think that covers it. Thank those of you who stayed all the way to the end. I hope with your help, I'll get to 10,000 subscribers faster than it took me to get to 5,000 subscribers, but it doesn't matter. I'll keep making these videos as long as they're fun for me, as long as folks like you keep giving me positive feedback, telling me that these videos are actually helping you. So thank you for watching and clear skies.